Dr. King was not murdered because he had a dream. That is a lie. Dr. King was not murdered because he had a dream. Dr. King was murdered because Dr. King began to transform his message away from civil rights to economic empowerment for the American African. Dr. King wasn't murdered primarily for speaking out against the war in Vietnam. That was part of it, but that was not the primary reason that they took out Dr. King the Great. Okay? Okay? King had to go for two reasons. Neither reason had anything to do with integration. Neither reason had anything to do with the sanitation worker strike in Memphis. Neither reason had anything to do with him speaking out against the war in Vietnam. Let me educate you. Let me educate you. The two reasons Dr. King was murdered. Number one. The same month that he was killed. This is why he had to die April 4th. The reason Dr. King had to die on April the 4th was because he was planning to lead a poor people's campaign to Washington, D.C. the same month, April of 68. Dr. King was going to take millions of Americans of every color, black, white, you name it. Dr. King was going to take millions of Americans from every color to Washington, D.C., and they were going to erect a tent city and they were going to sleep there and live there until everybody left with a home and a job. Economic revolution. It would have embarrassed the United States. It would have embarrassed the United States to have poor people sleeping outside the White House, poor people sleeping outside the Supreme Court, poor people sleeping outside of the halls of Congress. It would have embarrassed the richest white nation in the world to have millions of poor people sleeping outside on his nation's capital. Economic revolution. So they had to kill Dr. King on April 4th because the poor people's campaign was scheduled for later the same month. The poor people's campaign was scheduled for later the same month. If you don't believe me, do your research. He had to die in Memphis to make it look like it was because of the sanitation worker strike. Because they could not let him go back to Atlanta. They could not let Dr. King go back to Atlanta and head out to Washington, D.C. He was not to get back to Atlanta. He was not to make it to D.C. And the only time that they were guaranteed to get him in public between Memphis, okay, and D.C. was at that Divine Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee, April 4th, 1968, room 306 or 603, I forget, room 306 or 603. Three plus six equal nine, the number of death, the number of the ancestors, the number of the rebirth. His murder had nothing to do with Vietnam, very little to do with Vietnam, nothing to do with Memphis, Tennessee. He had to die in Memphis so he didn't make it to Washington. Dr. King had to die in Memphis so he didn't make it to Washington, brothers and sisters. What's the other reason Dr. King was murdered? What's the other reason Dr. King was murdered? So you got to understand something. That Dr. King visited the grave of the most honorable Marcus Garvey in Jamaica. Dr. King visited the grave of the most honorable Marcus Garvey in Jamaica. Dr. King went to Jamaica and met with the Pan-Africanist in Jamaica. This is after Malcolm was assassinated. So Malcolm was assassinated and then King goes to visit the gravesite of the greatest black leader of the 20th century. Hands down. The only one who didn't need to use a religion to organize black people. Garvey. The only one who didn't need to use a religion to organize black people. Garvey. Okay. And so after after Malcolm was murdered, a Garveyite. Okay. King goes to Jamaica, visits the grave of the Honorable Marcus Garvey. And I personally believe that Dr. King was influenced by Garvey 
And I believe that Dr. King felt obligated to pick up the torch that had been dropped with Malcolm's death. And so I believe Dr. King took Malcolm and Garvey, which is basically the same thing. King took Malcolm and Garvey and synthesized the message of Malcolm and Garvey. And Malcolm's message was nothing but 21st, 20th century Garvey, right? King synthesized the message of Garvey and Malcolm, and he synthesized it with his own message. And that's why when you listen to Dr. King, the last three years of his life, listen to post Malcolm, Dr. King, listen to post Malcolm, Dr. King. When you listen to post Malcolm, Dr. King, you're listening to Marcus Garvey. When you listen to Dr. King post Malcolm's assassination, you're listening to the spirit of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. King had to die because he went away from the civil rights to the economic empowerment of Malcolm and Garvey. I disagree with you. Mixed race Africans are in fact African. You have no right to deny them. You have no right to deny them the Africanity. Mixed race Africans are African. If you have a black mother or father, you African. That's Dr. Umar's position. That's Marcus Garvey's position. That's Kwame Nkrumah's position. That's the official revolutionary pan-African nationalist position. I'm getting tired of you Negroes practicing tribalism. We have enough petty differences as we already have. Why do y'all need to keep on coming up with more tribalistic ways to separate the race? Why do we want to discriminate against each other so much? We don't ever want to discriminate against the oppressor. We don't ever want to discriminate against those who are robbing us, but we want to discriminate within the race. Why do y'all keep trying to tribalize the race. This is not a tribe. We are a family. If you wasn't a descendant of a slave, you not one of us. If you wasn't born in Africa, you not one of us. If you got a white mommy or daddy, you not one of us. If you a Christian, you not one of us. If you not a Muslim, you not one of us. What is wrong with you self-hating knuckles? What is wrong with you self-hating ninjas that you keep on looking for more and more ways to tribalize African people? We have been tribalized enough. We have been tribalized enough. We got light skin and dark skin. We got nappy head and curly head. We got educated and uneducated. We got ghetto and bougie. Okay? We got this gang and that gang. This part of the city, that part of the city. Brother, this religion, that religion. Don't we have enough differences as it is? And you Negroes want to keep on finding more ways to split up, cut up, segregate, compartmentalize the African race. And I'm tired of it. You knuckles. You no good ninjas. Come on, brothers and sisters. All for one and all. All for one and one for all. All for one and one for all. United we stand, divided we fall. United we stand, divided we fall. United we stand as one race. One family. In your mama's house, everybody had their own room, but they were still part of the same family. Your brother had his room. Your sister had her room. Your other brother had his room. But y'all still belong to the same family. It's okay to have differences and still be family. It's okay. Everybody don't have to be a more. Everybody don't have to be a Hebrew. Everybody don't have to be a Garveyite. Everybody don't have to be a Nawapian. Everybody don't have to be a vegetarian or a vegan. 
You understand? Everybody don't got to be a Muslim. You're in a different room from me, but we're in the same house. The only people who are hung up on who we are, are us. Who we are is us. The only people who are hung up on who we are is ourselves. White folks ain't hung up on who you are. Chinese ain't hung up on who you are. Latinos, even though most of them black, they not hung up on who you are. East Indians ain't hung up. No, European Jews, nobody's hung up on who you are but you. I told you, I've been teaching you for 20 years. 10 years locally, another 10 years globally. I've been teaching you this for 20 years. 10 years locally plus 10 years globally. I've been teaching y'all this. There is no name that's going to liberate you from oppression. There is nothing you can call yourself that is going to liberate you from oppression. Nothing at all. Nothing you can call yourself. No name is going to free you. No name, no religion. Work is going to free you. Organization and work. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you don't want to hear it. But the only thing that's going to free you is organization and work. Not praying, not voting, not marching. Organizing and working. That's it. That's it. See, people give you religion because it is mystical. It is, it, it taps into your imagination. And anytime you talk, tap into black people's emotions and imagination, you can hook them. You can hook them with emotion and imagination. That's why the pastor likes to use emotion and imagination. The politician likes to use emotion and imagination. Good salesman, emotion and imagination. I don't use that. I use inspiration and organization. Inspiration and organization. Not emotions and imaginations. I use inspiration and organization. The other reason Dr. King was murdered. The other reason Dr. King was murdered is because the Kerner Commission report came out. Everybody familiar with the Kerner Commission? Lyndon Baines Johnson put together a commission to study the causes of the 1967 and 1967 riots throughout the United States. More than 30 major cities had major race reliance, major race riots between 1967 and Dr. King's death in 1968. Detroit, Michigan and Newark, New Jersey were the most explosive. Newark, New Jersey, Detroit, Michigan were the most explosive riots. But there was riots all over America. The red hot summer of 67. The red hot summer of 67. So they killed Malcolm in 65. And after they killed Malcolm in 65, you had riots in 66. that, climbed. And then they killed Dr. King in 68. And so Lyndon Baines Johnson said, we got to do something about the Negro revolt. Lyndon Baines Johnson said we have to do something about the Negro revolt. He put together a commission called the Kerner Commission on civil unrest, civil disobedience, whatever they call it. You need to read that book. Order a copy of the Kerner Commission report. Order a copy of the Kerner Commission report. When you read it, you will know why Dr. King had to go. When you read the Kerner Commission, you can buy the whole report. You might could find it online. OK, but when you read the report, you will know why Dr. King had to go because the Kerner Commission basically, ironically, paradoxically gave Dr. King all the ammunition he needed for the poor people's campaign. I'm going to say it again. And I am the first scholar to make this connection. Stop stealing my intellectual property without giving me credit. 
I'm the first scholar to make this connection between the Kerner Commission report and Dr. King's assassination. The Kerner Commission report came out a few months before Dr. King was killed. And the reason he had to die is because the Kerner Commission had the information in it that Dr. King could use to expound upon the economic apartheid in America. The Kerner Commission, ironically, the government, ironically, gave Dr. King the ammunition he needed to expose them and prove that the American African was being marginalized from America's economic pie. So the government said, with this Kerner Commission, if we let Dr. King go to D.C. with the type of information that our own government put out, if we let Dr. King go to D.C. with the type of information that our own government put out, he will cause the economic revolution in this country. Dr. King will cause an economic revolution in this country, and that's why he died on April 4th. Because a few weeks later, he was going to be in D.C. If you don't believe me, do your research. Dr. King's Poor People's Campaign was supposed to kick off in April. Right after he left Memphis, he was headed to D.C. Right after he left Memphis, he was headed to D.C. They couldn't let Dr. King leave Memphis. They couldn't let Dr. King leave Memphis. They couldn't let Dr. King leave Memphis. Memphis. Get the Kerner report. Yes, you spelled it right. K-E-R-N-E-R. -E -E Get the Kerner report. And the Kerner report basically said, the Kerner report basically said that the problems that black people have in America are created by white institutions. Listen, this is what the Kerner reports. This is why Dr. King had to go. This is why Dr. King had to. The Kerner Commission said that the problems that affect black people in the ghetto were created by white institutions, sustained by white institutions and maintained by white institutions, brothers and sisters. Kerner, K-E-R-N-E-R. K-E-R-N-E-R, -E -E Kerner Report, Kerner Report. This is what they said. The government's own commission said that the problems of black people was not caused by gangster rap, wasn't caused by the NFL or the NBA. It wasn't caused by black men going to jail. It wasn't caused by mothers on welfare. That's not what they said. The Kerner Report said that the problems of black people in the ghetto were created, created by white institutions maintained by white institutions and sustained by white institutions. They put the burden, the government's own commission. This is why you got to study the Kerner Commission. This is why you got to read the report to find out why Dr. King really died. The government's own people said the government created the problems in the ghetto. The government created the problems in the ghetto. The government benefits from the problems in the ghetto. The government maintains the problems in the ghetto. This is what it said. Read it yourself. And if they said, if we let Dr. King go to D.C. with this type of information, he'll be unstoppable. The, 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 the irony of that portion of American history, the irony and that portion of American history lies in the fact that the government provided Dr. King with the weapon he needed. The irony of the 1960s is that the government provided Dr. King with the weapon he needed. The Kerner Commission report was the weapon Dr. King needed to launch the Poor People's Campaign. And that's why they couldn't let him out of Memphis. Dr. King was not a Pan-Africanist, but one of my greatest heroes. He was in Ghana. He was in Ghana when Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, led this independence celebration. Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King was in Ghana celebrating with Pan-Africanist Kwame Nkrumah on the occasion of Ghana's independence. Dr. King knew what it was. 
Dr. King knew it was Garveyism to get back. He was moving in that direction. He said, Malcolm is gone. Garvey is gone. I got to hold it down. I got to hold it down. And he held it down, brothers and sisters. That's why whenever I go to Atlanta, I got to pay homage to the king. 39 years old. At 32, he was the unquestioned leader of black America at 32 years old. You can't say nothing to me about no Dr. King. But y'all want to go worship Obama and Kamala. But y'all want to go worship Obama and Kamala. We got ancestors like Dr. King and Fred Hampton. Let me say something on the Fred Hampton piece. The new movie that's coming out. Let me say something about this Fred Hampton movie. Let me say something about this new Fred Hampton movie. I want my Africans to hear me. My continental Africans, my American Africans, my European Africans, my Caribbean Africans, my Central South American Africans. This is what I want to say. I have no problem with an African brother or sister playing an American African ancestor because we're all one people. I have no problem with an African brother or sister from another place playing an American African hero in a movie because we are all one family. However, if you're going to play the ancestor of a particular branch of the African family, you must have respect for that branch of the African family and you must have a special affinity for that ancestor. I am totally against, totally against any African in the world going into any other African community in the world and partaking in their particular art form not having respect for that particular African community and not having a special connection and affinity to the ancestor that you're playing. I can't say that that's the case with the upcoming Fred Hampton movie. I can't say that. I've seen no evidence that Daniel from Get Out is anti-American African. I've seen no evidence that he doesn't have a pan-African outlook. I've seen the allegations, but I've seen no evidence. So I want to make my position clear. Yes, we are one family. Yes, I have no problem with the continental African playing an American African hero. I have no problem with that as long as they respect the American African and have a special affinity for the ancestor that they're playing. It's no different than when I go to South Africa. It's no different than when I go to South Africa and play Robert Sabukwe. If I'm given the chance to go to South Africa and play Robert Sabukwe, I respect all my South African brothers and sisters. I love my Swazi. I love my Zulu. I love my Kosa. I love all my South African family. I love Soweto. I love Durban. I love KwaZulu, Kyalisha, Cape Town. I love it all. I love it all. Alexandria, I love it all. So I can play Robert Sabukwe because when I'm in South Africa, I'm a South African. Do you understand? I can play Kwame Nkrumah because when I'm in Ghana, I'm a Ghanaian. I can play the Namdi Azika way because when I'm in Nigeria, I'm a Nigerian. I don't set myself apart. I blend into the family. I'm simply saying that if you don't have a pan-African mindset, if you don't have a pan-African mindset. If you practice African tribalism in any form, I don't care if it's American African tribalism, continental tribalism, Caribbean tribalism, European African tribalism, I will reject you. I don't care who you are. I will reject you. I don't care who you are. As far as I'm concerned, there's only two Africans in the world. As far as I'm concerned, there's only two kinds of Africans in the world. The pan-African and everybody else. That's it. There's only two types of Africans, the Pan-Africanist and everybody else. There's only two types, the Pan-Africanist and the tribalist. That's it. The Pan-Africanist versus the tribalist. Those are the only two types of Africans in the world. You are either for the whole family or you are a tribalist. That's it.
The conversation is over. You're for the African family everywhere or you're not for the African family anywhere. Brothers and sisters, it's 10 o'clock. I need to get some beauty sleep. Get ready for the book signing in Charlotte tomorrow. North Carolina, I am here. South Carolina, come on up. Tennessee, come on over. Alabama, come on over. Cuzzo's Cuisine, outside, under the heated tent. My last lecture of the year, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Books, pictures, hugs, conversations, questions and answers is going down tomorrow. Cuzzo's Cuisine. No tickets necessary. Black Parent Advocate book release, $50 a piece. Credit card, cash, or cash app. Donate to FDMG, brothers and sisters. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. If I've ever helped you and your child, I challenge you to do a two-minute testimonial on your YouTube page, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your Facebook. The people I've helped should be louder than what they are. Don't take from me and you cannot replenish me. Don't take from me and you cannot replenish me. Okay? That's all I'm going to say.